there's a, a great statistic that I like using. Since 1980, the city of Los Angeles has added one million people to its population. Okay? At the same time, we have lost net 50,000 jobs. Isn't that unbelievable to think about? You bring a million people in, and you have 50,000 jobs less. Now, here's the other amazing statistic. The L.A. County cities around us have added 500,000 new jobs. That's all you need to know. People are moving out of the city because they don't feel they're being taken care of or there isn't a platform to do business here. When it comes to jobs, the cities around us are actually eating our lunch. So we need to let businesses know not only around the country and around the county that L.A. is open up for business. We need to let cities know around the globe that L.A. is open up for business. And third is our transportation system, or the lack of thereof, and it hurts the viability of the city. Now, I've been on the record talking about this. I'm not a believer about putting everything underground. We live in the best climate in the world. I don't think people want to be in a tube underground. And you could build a lot more rail line if you put it above ground. And if you look at many of the great cities around the world in terms of getting around the cities, it is above ground. Now, I'm not an expert on transportation. I think I know a thing or two about it, but I will tell you that I am the owner of the smallest licensed railroad by the California Public Utilities Commission in the world, and it's the trolley at the Grove. That is actually a regulated railroad, believe it or not. But here's my point. The trolley at the Grove, and the Americana for that matter, is full of people every day. I don't know if you've been there. People wait in line to ride the trolley. Believe it or not, it doesn't go anywhere. And it's full of people. If you built an engaging, interesting transportation system in Los Angeles at the street level, where people could get on and get off and populate businesses, where people could get off along Ventura Boulevard, shop, get back on, go grab a bite, get back on, connect to their car, and then get home, or vice versa, all of a sudden, you're serving that customer and you're serving those businesses to move that customer around and start spending dollars along boulevards. What are they going to do in a tube? Underground. Now, I know there's certain systems that need to be underground in terms of speed of travel to get across large reason, regions. But I really believe that a surface system throughout Los Angeles makes the most sense. And even if you want to have a speed train that is moving people at long distances, I'm sure there's reasons why this can't be done. I also also believe there's a solution for every problem. Run it down the freeway. Go down Santa Monica Freeway and connect the west side to downtown. Go down Ventura Freeway and connect the valley to downtown. Get people moving in this city. The congestion around this city is only compounded now by the amount of potholes that we have. And the only reason I'm grateful for the congestion is because if I could actually travel at the speed limit, I would probably be blowing out my tires. The basic things we need to be doing in this city are just not happening today. And my last point, and then I'm going to open it up for some some questions, because I always like questions and answers better than anything else. My last point is <clears throat> that we need a different sense of leadership in the city. And I'm not saying that I'm the right leadership or I'm not the right leadership. I'm not here to campaign. But I think I have a sense of what we need in this city. We need elected officials who look past the next election in making decisions. We need elected officials who are actually decisive. We need elected officials who I call know how to have disruptive leadership. And I'm not talking about mean leadership. I'm talking about leadership that's prepared to look at new ways of doing things that don't fall into the same old rules. And let me give you an example. When Jim Hahn called me up and asked me to be the president of the police commission, my first answer was, there is no way. I'm not going to do it. I had just come off of being a commissioner at DWP for a long time. Um, and it wasn't I didn't want to spend the time. 
but I understood the complications of that job. But to Jim's credit, he didn't let it go, and he stayed on top of me, and Bill Wardlaw pushed me to do it, and I finally agreed to do it. And in hindsight, it was the best thing I've ever done in terms of public service. When I got to LAPD, everybody told me what I should and shouldn't do. Here's who you should talk to. Here's who you shouldn't talk to. Don't engage the police union. Nobody ever talks to the police union. They're going to fight everything the commission wants to do. The first thing I did is I called the president of the police union, and I said, let's grab lunch. And she said, no commissioner, president of the police commission, has ever taken me out to lunch. I said, great. I said, I don't know what's wrong with you, but I'll take you out to lunch. <clears throat> So we went out to lunch and we, we had a chat. I went and talked to the officers. I connected with our customer, the officers. And I asked him what was going on. I learned about what was happening at the people level. And at the people level, it was clear we had a serious problem. I think you need somebody in City Hall that understands the city and has a grasp of how the city works, but also hasn't been part of the problem for a long time. Because if you've been in City Hall for a long time, you walk into a meeting with a set of assumptions that may not be accurate. And I think today what this city needs is somebody to walk in and say, you know what? We're looking at the whole world differently today. We're not going to buy into this is the way we've always done it, so it's the way we're going to do it now. And one of the great benefits I had when I was a police commissioner is I didn't care about getting reappointed. I didn't care about getting reelected. All I cared about doing was figuring out a way of how to serve the residents better. How do we stop having kids getting shot in East LA when they're walking to school? And when I was called out to Boyle Heights and I met with families out there and they were talking about the risk their kids have of being on the sidewalk walking to school, and I came back and I recommended disbanding the D.A.R.E. program. And everybody said, you know, Rick, you're crazy. DARE is a popular program. It's a Reagan program. And I said, it doesn't matter what we do with these kids and the officers in the classroom if they can't get to the classroom. And the big move that Jim Hahn made and the police commission made at that time is get cops back on the street, connect with the community, get the senior lead officers back on the street. So that's my main thing today. We've got a lot of problems in this city to deal with. We also have great opportunities. It is clearly the greatest city in the world. It's a city of four million people. It goes from Porter Ranch to the Port of LA. It covers 500 square miles. The diversity of this city is our strength. The differences we have is actually our strength. And what will work in the Valley is gonna be different than what East LA needs and what South LA needs and what West LA needs and we need to take it neighborhood by neighborhood, connect with our customers, find out the problem, and slowly but surely start moving this ship to be more consumer-centric in serving our people, from law enforcement to paramedics to fire. And let me just tell you, and the one last point, and then I'll be quiet and take a couple questions because I know your time's limited. We've got to think about our priorities in the city. Now, when we have paid public works commissioners in the city of Los Angeles, I think they get over 100,000 a year, I don't know exactly what the number is, and at the same time, we're reducing the budget for cops and firefighters and paramedics, we got a priority problem, and we shouldn't allow that. And what has to happen in this city, and I sense it is happening, is people actually have to say, we've had enough, we need a change. We need to change how we've done business, and we're not going to tolerate it anymore. Because our future is too important, and the present is at risk. When you have four million people living in a city, you've got to start getting things right, because as the world continually gets smaller, and LA has to compete in a global platform, the larger this city gets, the more complex the problems become, and the less competitive we become. So what you're doing as chambers are frankly one of the most important things that can be done because you're representing business that is the lifeblood of this city. So you're champions out in the community. I thank you for doing what you're doing and I thank you for inviting me here today. Thank you very much.
My brother went to SC, who was the national swim champion in 61, 62. What is it about this institution, pursuit of excellence, for coaches, John McKay, et cetera? Tell me your thoughts on this. It's about the Trojan family. You know, the great secret to USC success at every level, education, sports, is all about the Trojan family and the support, and it attracts the best athletes in the world and the best coaches in the world. But it's more than that. You know, there's a spirit, there's a determination, there's a commitment, there's a competitiveness. And I think people deep in their hearts say, we're a Trojan, and Trojans win. Who in your mind, since you were a young, since you were a young man, do you think was the best football coach there? In the years you watched as a young man up to today? You know, John McKay was okay. on the top of that list, right? You know, how do you not? You know, John Robinson was a phenomenal coach, too. And Pete Carroll was a great coach. I mean, SC has had really great coaches, and I, I think Giffen is going to turn out to be one of the greats. And it's academically has come on so strong in the last yeah. 20 years, and I think it's finally getting its due for that, as many years ago it was not, and now it's comparable um, from people I know to UCLA as far as academic excellence. Oh, well, you know, it, it's rated surpassed UCLA, and uh, clearly Stanford is in our sights, and I think uh, under Max Nikias' leadership as president, he's going to get there. It's in the top, you know, 20 schools in the United States, and I think it's the best school in the United States. Obviously. Now, why did you just stop being a lawyer and go into this development business? I was a lousy lawyer. <laughs> Alisa, what did you think of this Mr. Caruso? He's pounding, he's not too close to the mayor, he doesn't think the mayor has done a very good job, but just as a business person, what is your reaction to his uh, thoughts today? I thought uh, Rick Caruso was very refreshing. Um, I feel that today he gave us a blueprint of what we need here in uh, Los Angeles area. And I just found it uh, enlightening, um, the things that he said and the ideas that he had. So I was very impressed. Did you know much about him as a developer prior to coming here today? No, I did not. Have you ever been to the Commons? Have you ever been to the Grove? Have you ever been to the Americana? The Grove and the Americana. And now you know he is the inspiration and brainchild in putting that together. Yes, and that actually sh uh, shed some light to it. And how do you think the city of Los Angeles is run today, just from your vantage point of potholes or things that don't work, things that do work, things that work up in Northridge where you live? We need help. The area, the L.A. needs help. Be a little more specific. Like what? Really, many of the things that he mentioned are school systems first and foremost, um, our community, you know, coming together again as a community. I'm born and raised here, and things have changed so much. I mean, you know, it really makes you consider moving out, like he said, but this is our home, so you want to stay.